My name is Nicole and I'm the owner of MTK Designs. Today I'm going to show you how to post a blog on your WordPress website. Let's begin by first logging into your website. For the sake of this video I'm going to log out and show you exactly where to go to log into your website. Okay, I'm at the main page of my website. I'm going to simply add a, a forward slant and wp-admin and it'll take me to my WordPress login. In this area you're going to type in your username and your password. If you're an MTK Designs client and you don't have this information please email us at info at m2ks.com. When you're done you can also click the little checkbox that says remember me so that it remembers your username for next time. It will not remember your password unless you're using a different browser. And I'm using Google Chrome. So if you're using Google Chrome, it will not remember your password. But when you're done, hit login. <coughs> this will pull you up to the dashboard. The dashboard is just an area that kind of gives you a brief idea of what you can do in WordPress. You've got your right now, you've got your quick press, you've got your comments area, incoming links, recent drafts, and just like an, a few little things here and there. Of course you have your site statistics too. Um, that's just something that will show you about how many likes you're getting and how many people are visiting your site. Quick press is where you can add a, a really simple blog. You can name it. And then you can write your comments here. Content. Then you can put your tags, and when you're done, you can simply just go ahead and publish it or save it for later. But at least you can get whatever information you want to get down immediately right here. This is a great place to put status updates, like if you're just trying to give a little bit of information to your clients or anything like that. But in this exercise, we're going to go to where it says Posts, and you're going to go hit the Add New. You're going to see this screen and it's completely blank and basically you're going to go ahead and put a title in like this. It can be any title you want and then when you're done you're going to go down to the content area and begin writing. Now between the content area and the title you're going to see this little edit right here. You're going to hit the edit button and you can actually change the name of this blog. I can do anything I want. Example, title, and I can press enter and it'll save whatever I want it to be. Now this will be the link to my blog. You can change it, you can make it different, it doesn't make a difference what you do, but it will change the link and the link should match the title or whatever you're trying to explain. Now we're going to put in some content. Go ahead and put in a little bit of content and while you're doing that I'm going to pull up my example post that I've already made. Okay. Okay. So this is my example post. And basically what I'm trying to do is kind of put together a blog that you could use to refer to later on when you <clears throat> want to remember what we had talked about in this video. <clears throat> now, um, basically you can read this blog. Um, this is just information that talks about what we're going to go over. So for the purpose of this video, I'm going to go ahead and put a header right here. Just so I can show you how to make a nice custom header. You can also make this a center, come to the right, or come to the left. There is no justified on WordPress. Um, however, I'm sure there's a plugin out there that will let you do that if you decide you need it. Um, for this one, I'm going to go ahead and put in header one. This is a title now, so I can change this to whatever I want. Um, you don't have to do this. Um, you can, you know, if if it's not something you need, don't worry about it. But it is kind of great to separate your sections with different titles. So if you're interested in doing so, feel free to do that. Okay, so now let's get into the meat and potatoes of how to add 
a blog or how to add an image to the blog. So this happens often. If this seems, if you ever, um, you know, delete a heading and your text changes, simply go to the paragraph and it'll go right back to normal. And then you can go ahead and align it back to where you want it to be. Okay. So now I'm going to add a picture. I want my picture to go right at the very top and to the left of my content. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to add media. Now, you can go ahead and upload an image very simply by going to the upload area. You can either click the select files, which will pull up your browser, or you can simply drag and drop your, it, your items into this box. It's very easy and doesn't take much time. So I'm going to go ahead and use this image. I want this to be the image. Now, if we go over here, you can see that you can edit the image which means you can scale it, you can make it a different color, whatever you want to do. In the title area, you can name the title. This particular item is called Web Design Tree. That's what I'm going to call it. There's a caption area here that you can type in anything you want to say about the picture. You don't have to use that, but some people prefer to. Then there's an alternate text. I strongly suggest that you use the alternate text option. Um, just write something in there that has to do with your your um, blog. So make sure you always use the same keyword. It's just kind of like a buzzword that the web that Google will look for. Web design tree of words. That's what I'm going to write. You can put it in a little description. Um, basically, what where this description is going to show up is if somebody clicks on the link to you know the link of your image. And then it will pull up a separate page on your Facebook or on your um, website that will allow them to read about what this image is. I don't usually do that. However, um, a lot of photographers like to do that because it gives them, you know, a little bit of a way to explain what their inspiration was or for whatever reason they wanted to just write something. Now, the alignment option means that you could do left, center, right, and none. If you use the none option, your photo is going to show up wherever it wants to. The right side means that it's going to be skewed to the right. The center means the image will be in the center on its own with no text around it. And the left one, which is the one I want, means that the image will be to the left side of my content. Now, you can link this image. You can change the size of it here, which is the thumbnail, or you can do a full size. You may have a few extra options depending on the size of your media file. I suggest that you make sure that the image fits within the width of your content area. Now, you can link this to a custom URL, which is anything. You can link it to your Facebook page, you can link it to your Twitter account, whatever you want to link this to, you can link it. You can also use the media file, which means that it'll link to itself, which sometimes on some web theme, website design themes for WordPress, they let you open up the image in a pretty little light box area. Now, that may not work with all themes, but some of them will. But you would need to use the media file option. There's also the attachment page, which means that if somebody clicks on your image, it will open up in a separate page and they can go ahead and save the image. So that's not always a great option if you don't want people stealing your stuff. What I tend to use the most is none because that means that the image will not be able to be saved and it will not be linked to anything. So that's my general choice, but sometimes you never know. You might run into a time when you may want to link it to something on your Facebook page and it also will help you get more people to your Facebook page. So now I'm going to hit the insert into post right here, the blue button, and bam. Now you can see that my image is floating to the left of my text. Now while you're in the middle of doing this, you're going to want to either save draft, which is up here in this corner, and I'll actually show you where that is exactly. It's right here. And you can look at your changes, or you can publish it if you think it's ready, which is what I'm going to do. And then what I want you to do is right-click on the view post and do open in new tab. And now we're going to review how this looks. So, I have my picture. 
and I have my content wrapped around the picture. Now, if I go down a little further, I can see that my title, your blog, is a header, which is exactly what I wanted. And I've got all my share buttons, which are plugins that I'm, I'm using. If you want to know more about some of the great plugins that I would recommend, I will be making a video on that coming very soon. But for now, I'm just going to look around and see if there's any major changes I want to make. Now, looking up here, I see that it was posted by admin, which is me. I can see that it's uncategorized, which is a problem. I don't want it to be uncategorized. I want people to know exactly what it is. And then there's no comments, which is fun because it's a brand new blog. Now, let's say that you are visiting my blog and you wanted to leave a comment. You would leave your message down here. And you can write anything you want. Now, for example, if somebody writes you a, a comment on your blog, I'm going to show you where to go ahead and find that. But for this moment, I'm just going to go ahead and write a comment. This is a test comment. Now, you can also allow my blog to email you when somebody comments on my post as well. And notify me of new posts by email means that you're subscribing to my blog. We do offer a lot of great content. So if you subscribe to our blog, you'll also receive great coupons as well. Now, when you're done making your comment, you hit submit. And what will happen now is that you can review the comment that this person has left on your page. Now, I can go into my add new post and I can go to the comments section right here and it will pull up all the comments. Now, because I wrote this comment, it's automatically approved as you can see here. But let's say that it was somebody else. You would have to actually approve their message before they could actually show up on the website. When you're done approving it, you can also reply to them. You can do a quick edit and fix the comment. Maybe it says something that's spelled incorrectly or whatever the case may be. You can go ahead and make an edit. You can also do a few other little things like you can do um, history. You can do a full edit. A full edit looks like this, where you can edit their URL, their email address. You can copy their email address and put it on you know, your mailing list, your e-marketing list. And you can also do, um, you know, change their comments around. Okay, then I'm going to hit update and you'll see what will happen. Now this comment has been changed with that last little bit that I wanted to type in. Then it also shows you where this, this blog was posted. So this blog was posted in the how to post a blog video example blog. This comment is now on the bottom of this blog. You can also go and view the article to make sure that that's the exact article that the comment is on. Now. Let's go over a few other little fundamentals of posting a blog. This is where you can go to, you can go back to any blog that you've posted and you can make any kind of um, changes that you need. So for this one, I'm going to go to where it says uncategorized and I'm going to change it to the how to videos. Now, this is how to post a blog on your website. So I'm going to go ahead and click that box too. If you want to add a new category, simply click on add new category, type in what you want to type in. How to post a blog on how to post a blog on WordPress websites. And now I'm going to add that category because it matches my keyword and that's what I want people to see. Now, you can also make that category a, parent, a child of one of the parent categories like web design or WordPress or search engine optimization. That's totally up to you how you want this to be. And it will organize itself. Now, I use a plugin called SEO by Yoast. It is my favorite plugin. You can use it for, um, you know, to get to get the right keywords and to make sure that you're on the right track for what you're trying to explain. 
Now, in this post, I'm, I'm talking about how to post a blog. So that's going to be my keyword now, how to post a blog. That's the keyword I want to go for. So now you're going to see that if you have your SEO by Yoast, which I suggest you go ahead and download, and I'll show you where to go to do that in my next video. But what I'm trying to show you now is that this is an article heading, which states that my heading for my article, all the way up at the top right here, shows the keyword that I'm optimizing for. It also shows that it's in the title. When this is the title right here that Google is going to use. So I can take this title, copy it and paste it to make sure that it stays. So I'm just going to hit control C. I'm going to go down here to where it says SEO title. and I'm going to hit control V to paste it just to make sure it shows up. Now, I like that they kind of give you a little blurb right here. So I'm going to take this, and I'm going to copy this, and then I'm going to come down here, and I'm going to paste that as well. Now, you're going to want to use up as much um, content in this area as possible. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go up to the top where my blog is, and I'm going to take a few extra sentences out just so I can make sure I fill up that entire area because I want that to make sure that I don't have 56 character that I have the full 156 characters that it requires because it will help with SEO. So Oops, I grabbed the wrong sentence. Now I'm going to go back up and grab the right one. Bear with me here. I'm just going to grab a little extra just in case. Now you can see that it, you know, we're negative 88 characters. So I'm going to have to back up a little bit. And back up a little bit more. And I'll just back up a little bit more. And then what I'll do is I'll add seven dots. So this way it covers all the information. And then I'm going to come up here and I'm going to fix this one because I want to make sure that we have the right amount of characters for this as well. Okay, now when you're done publishing your post, there's a section on this plugin that you can use to verify that everything is done correctly. It's called the page analysis. We don't have it set up yet, so we can't do it yet. But there's also the advanced settings, and this is where, like, let's say you write a blog that you don't want other people to be able to find. You can do a no-follow, and the search engines will not follow that particular page of your website. But most of the time, you're going to want people to find the posts that you put out. So definitely don't change these options unless you are absolutely sure that you want to. Now, you can do... Um, these different options. You can do index, no index, and default post type, currently index. So I usually just say keep it on the default if you're not sure what that means. Okay? Because I'm not going to get into too many advanced things in this video. So basically, in, in, you know, in summary, let's not even bother with the advanced tab because that's something that's very complicated to understand. Now, there's also the social area, which means that you can put a description that will show up on Facebook and one that will show up on Google+. Should you choose to make a copy of this particular post and post it on your Facebook, which I'll show you how that works. I'm going to go to my company page. And I'm going to scroll down to where I can post a link and I'm going to show you what happens. This is the link and this is what Facebook has found inside of its um, inside of the description. You can always change it once you get onto Facebook by just clicking on it. Just click on the text. But I like to just make it so the description is exactly what I want to show up on Facebook and not have to edit it every single time I post a link. So that's why it's best to just go ahead and put the information in right here, however you want it to be read. 
I'm not going to go into too much on that, but basically that's the SEO by Yoast. Now, the next thing you're going to want to do is put an excerpt. An excerpt is like a small um, description, a, sh a short and sweet description of what your blog is about. This is what will <clears throat> this is what will pull on your blog's page. So, for example, here is my blog page on my website. This is right here is the excerpt that it's going to pull from this particular blog. It'll either get its own description or it'll pull from the excerpt that you write here. So you can go ahead and write an excerpt, and if you want to learn more about manual excerpts, you can go to this page on the WordPress Codex, and you can read more about what a, what exactly a excerpt is and what you should do with it. Okay. Now we're going to talk about trackbacks. Trackbacks and pingbacks are very complicated. Basically, what I suggest is that you read this article about pingbacks and trackbacks because they are not easy to grasp right away um, but basically what it is is that you can copy somebody's um, let's say you're doing research for your blog and you find a great blog about something that's very similar to what you are writing about you can go ahead and take their link and track back it to their website and then what will happen is that person will have to approve it just like a comment and as soon as they approve it, that link will be a backlink to your new blog. So if you understand that and you're confident enough to try it, go ahead and try. And again, if you want to, you can refer to the WordPress codex to get some extra information. Okay. This is the, um, the next area down is the custom fields area. Some themes have a particular order or they have some extras that you can use that are already set as defaults um, you are welcome to go ahead and get to learn these I'm not going to go into this because this is not a very advanced blog um, or a very advanced video about blogging so if you want to learn more about this you can also refer to the WordPress codex which will go over what this particular area can do for you so just, you know, pull it up. It'll be um, a link underneath your custom fields area. And you can go ahead and click on that link and it'll take you to that page I just showed. Now, discussions means that you're allowing comments and that you're allowing track bags on, on this page. Let's say that you don't want people to comment on your website. You can simply turn off comments and turn off the, the track bags and ping bags. Because other bloggers may want to track back to you or ping back to you um, if you want them to be able to do that to help you grow your popularity on your blog then you may want to keep these checked just so you can show Google that you are a good source and you know it also helps with the marketing part of your website now let's um, get into comments we went a little we went over a little bit of what a comment is but if you want to add a new comment on your own blog you're welcome to do so in this area now, down here is what we call slug. A slug is when you change the name or you change the URL around a little bit because it's too long or whatever the case may be. But, or maybe you just want to put your keyword and nothing more. And that's what I'm going to do because I don't really think it's necessary to have all these video, example, video examples of blogs. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this. I was hitting the wrong button there. I'm sorry about that. But, uh, okay. I just wanted to say this how to post a blog because that's what I'm trying to show you now if we go down here to where the author area is you can if you have multiple authors or if you want to let somebody from your company or a friend or whatever anybody be able to use this back end of your website then they'll, you'll have multiple options of editors for or authors for your website but for this particular case, I'm the only author on this website. I do have other websites in which my employees and subcontractors can log in. But on this particular website, this is all me. So I'm the only one. And if you're connected with Jetpack, then you should see a sharing option down here. If you want to turn off the sharing option, you're welcome to do so by simply unclicking the box. I don't know why anybody would want to do that because it does help build your popularity when people are able to, 
you know, share you on Facebook, Twitter, and all the other popular social media sites. Now, this Shareaholic is a plugin that I particularly like. You're welcome to go ahead and search for this on the plugins area. I'll show you where that is really quick. This is your plugin area, and you're welcome to go to Add New and type in the name of any plugins that you may want to use. So for this case, I want to do Shareaholic. You can type in simply Shareaholic, or you can type in a description of what it does. But either way, you can hit search the plugins, and it will pull up a various list of different plugins. This one here is the actual one. Shareaholic share buttons and related posts, version 7.0.3.3. Now, um, you're welcome to do that, and basically, just so you look at the details here. It shows any any plugin that you want to decide to, you know, go ahead and install on your website. You can go to the description area or the details area, and you'll be able to see a description, recent updates that have been made to it. You can go down and see recommendations and related content. What it actually is going to do. It's fast and secure. There's all different kinds of information that you can look through. And then it shows you the installation, how to install it um, manually and both in the admin panel. Then it also has screenshots of what you're going to actually get yourself into, what it's going to look like when it's installed, what it's going to look like when you put it on your blog, all that good stuff. So it'll go into a lot of different details that you're welcome to go ahead and look at. These are just images of what the actual plugin will do. Okay, so that's that's the plugin for Shareaholic. But like I said, we're not going to get into actually installing plugins in this particular video. But you'll be able to take a look at that. Now, if you decide to get Shareaholic and you don't want people to share with Shareaholic, you can hide the share buttons. You can also hide the um, related content, which I'll show you really quickly what that looks like. This is the share your knowledge. And then I'll go to a different blog just because this one's still in the process of being designed. Here's a blog that I'm, I've worked on that's finished. Here's some comments from clients. Now you can pin these to your Pinterest account. And then if you go down a little further, you'll see my share buttons and some related content that you can look at um, that are also tagged in the category the same way or similar. Okay, so now that we're there, let's go over here and you can go ahead and, and unshare like I said, but you don't have to. Now, let's say you want a featured image. The featured image will display in the blog area before they open up the blog. So this will be on my blog area if my theme allows it. Okay? Bear in mind that your theme may not allow you to have pictures on the actual main blog page. So if that's the case, don't panic. It'll just pull the main image. Now if you do have the ability to add an image that will be, you know, of your choice, then that image will appear right here. You can click on the actual post and that image will not be in the post. It will only be on the actual blog page, which is right here. Okay, so that's how you add a featured image. Now the last little thing I'm going to get into is tags. Tags are very important. Which categories you are going to, you know, generalize your category. And this is just going to be a very, very brief description of exactly what you're talking about. Then the tags are going to get more specific about what you're actually trying to get in, you know, to get done. So let's say I want, um, I'm talking about WordPress posting. So WordPress blog posting. And I'm going to hit enter to add it. Now, if you don't know how, um, if you're not comfortable hitting enter, you can also press the add button. But I'm talking about posting blogs, so I'm going to do blog posting. That's another good one. I'm going to do um, blog posting. Oops, posting videos, and I'm going to hit the enter button. And then I'm going to do one that's spelt wrong. Now, let's say you make a mistake. 
all you have to do is hit the little X button next to the tag that you've created. There's also the option to use the most commonly used tags. Now, because I just recently started blogging for my company, I'm not going to have any recently used tags. So you may have some, you may not. If you don't, don't panic because you're just getting started. So it will eventually happen. You'll eventually have everything you need. Now, the last thing I'm going to go over is, or the last few things I'm going to go over is, one, how to change the color of the text, and two, how what these different options on the publish menu are. Okay? And then I also want to show you the last part of the SEO um, plugin by Yoast. So I can show you how the page is being perceived by the search engines. So let's start with adding um, color to our po to our post. So I'm going to say I'm going to go ahead and, and color this, and I want it to be colored red. So I'm going to go over to here where it shows the colors, and I'm going to make this red. Now I also wanted it to be bold and italicized so that people can see that this is like the main title of my blog. Welcome to MTK Designs. Now, when you're done with that, you can go ahead and change any other color. So let's say there's a buzzword that you want people to really focus on when they see it. You can also aesthetically add, you know, a little bit of green, a little bit of blue, or whatever it want you want. But for this case, I might just go ahead and make this one red and bold. So this way people know that's, that is the most important part, is that we're talking about WordPress. Okay? Now, let's go over to the publish menu over here and we'll show we'll look at some of the options that are available. You can preview your changes, which will open up in a separate tab usually. Sometimes it doesn't, so make sure you always save your work before you do this. So you have the ability to look at what you've done. Now, when you're when you're done with that, you can go to where it says status published. You can go ahead over here and say you want it to be pending review or make it a draft. If it's already fully published, you can always change it if you want to make sure you make those little adjustments that you may have missed. There's also the visibility option. You can make this a public post or you can password protect it and create a password. I'm just going to go ahead and make one. and I'm going to show you what it looks like to actually go into a blog like that. And then you can also use the private option which means that Nobody can use this blog at all except you and the people that are logged into your website. Okay? So I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste my password. And then I'll show you in a moment how to, um, how the page looks with the password protection option. The publish area is, let's say that you published it, but you want it to be an earlier publish. You can change the date of when it's published, and you can even change the time. Usually the WordPress clock will be in the 24 hour military time, so you may see 1818 later on, um, but depending on what time it is, you'll see that time in military code. And then there's publicize, which is not connected. You can publicize it on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Tumblr, you know, a couple of different options, and you can also add more. But this is um this area means that you would have to actually connect to your Facebook page and allow it to connect to your Facebook page and also post on your behalf. So basically this is what would happen. Um I am using MTK Designs. This is my personal MTK Designs. Now I want to go ahead and submit. Go go ahead and set OK. And now I can also add a connection to my Twitter account. Here's my Twitter account. I'm going to hit Authorize App. And now every single time that I make that I make a post, it's going to automatically post to my Facebook and my Twitter account. So I'm going to go ahead and hit Update. And sometimes it can take a little while. Now, I'm going to go back to my post, and I'm going to hit refresh. And I'm going to see all the little changes that I made. Now, this is a password protected. So you can see here that you can only see 
the information that's up here that says how to blog on how to post a blog on WordPress, blah blah blah. So now I'm going to go ahead and put in my password and I'm going to hit submit. Then you can see that now I am inside of my protected blog. It's going to add protected to your title of your blog. So that's pretty much it when it comes to um, posting a blog. That's the basics. And of course, keep in touch with us because we may be posting some videos about how to get more advanced. And like I said, I was also going to just go briefly over the SEO by Yoast and show you what the page analysis looks like. When you get into using the SEO by Yoast, just read through the different things that it's asking for. Like if it says no outbound links appear on the page, that just means that I need to add an outbound link. So, for example, I can go on here and click on the WordPress, highlight it, and I can hyperlink it to WordPress.org. So, now I'm going to type in www.wordpress.org and I can make it open in a new window. And I can say Word, WordPress blog posting and I can hit add link. Now let's say you wanted to link to something that is not that's that's on your actual website. You can click on this and that's a hyperlink option and I can click on any of these that I want and I can link it to one of the pages of my website and I wouldn't want it to open in a new link because I want them to stay on my website and so the whole point is for them to stay and so I can link to this page and they'll stay on my website. Now that's pretty much it and if you want to go ahead and you know get rid of the hyperlink you can always click right here and unlink it. Also there's a few other little options here that you're welcome to go over um, but the main thing that I want to show you and the last thing I want to show you is up here where it has screen options you can turn off some of the areas that you know you're never going to use so this way it's customized to what you want to use also you can drag and drop, drop any of these areas that you want to move around so you're welcome to do that to make it easier on yourself there's also this nifty little area here which is the help bar that you're welcome to use to find information and make sure you understand how to do how to post a blog you can go to the documentation on writing and editing posts which is right here and this shows you everything that I've just taught you in this video so you're welcome to go through here and just read through it and find out exactly what it is that you know you can do and then the visual versus text editor that's gonna show you what this actual area is here the text editor area which is mostly HTML and code so if you're not comfortable with code just stay away from this area if you don't mind and stay on the visual side which is very basic and um, also you can visit the support forums which I'll pull open for you real quick this is where you can ask any kind of questions if there's an issue or if you feel like you've been hacked or any of that kind of information you can type it right here in the search area so that pretty much covers it um, you know of course if you have any questions whatsoever you can go ahead and post a comment on this um, YouTube posting and if there's anything that we can help you with in the future whether you need a website search engine optimization a social media marketing campaign or business card designs brochures magnets all kinds of different things um, MTK designs does it all we are a full service web design company and we'd be happy to hear from you um, our phone number and details will be listed at the bottom of this post or of this video and if you would like to visit our website, this is the web address right here, m2ks.com. And we hope to hear from you soon. Thank you for watching this video, and I hope you enjoyed.